Welcome Traveller, I'm free to play and I'm a guide for successful free to play adventure on Astera. Today you'll learn everything about the game's terminology I would have known when I started the game one year ago. I spread this video into three parts, status effects, attacking and damaging and battle actions and give examples to anything. Ready? Fine, let's go. So if we're going to menu others and then to help, there we get every information about the game if we're not a beginner. If we are a beginner, you can also go for hints for beginners. But these are not covering what I want to cover in the next minute. So I just go into a battle and for the status effects, because that is the section we're going through right now. There are augmenting effects and feebling effects and status ailments, and I will cover all of them. Uh, for the status ailments, you have Poison, Bleeding, Silence, Sleep, Paralysis, Terror, Weakness and Combust, which is not in the early game, but it will be added later in the game with a few other units, which will come up. Those status ailments are extended by a few characters. For example, if you have uh, someone like Jill Mela or Jamela, I don't know how to exactly say this name, she has one passive which says extended ailment give. So these ailments will be extended by one turn inflicted by self. So now you know what is an ailment and what a give means. This will differ with another unit I will tell you right now. For example, Viola, because she has a skill which is called extend and feebling joint give. So she will extend her own and feebling effects, whatever that is, and she will give that so joint, also inflicted by the paired ally, so the one in the same row. So if we put Viola right here and uh, for example Billy in the second row behind her, then you have the extended and feebling effect from Billy too. Billy has a lower speed of all by 10% for example. This will also be extended by one turn. This is what Viola's enfeebling extent is doing. And um, so what is exactly an enfeebling effect? You have heard it. It is the uh, speed down for example, but there is a lot more. You have everything which is covering right here. And those enfeebling effects are on the right side. So everything which is causing physical attack down, elemental attack down and everything which goes down. So what is the opposite of that? Physical attack up and stuff. This is all augmentations. Of course, there are also units who can extend those too. For example, Richard here, who has both of those. He has extend duration of augmenting and enfeebling effects. So you can do both. Richard is very good. So you, just for you to know, but he can't extend that to the front row ally. When we're going to Brigitte, she has a very special effect. It shortens the duration of some enfeebling effects. So everything which is going from attack down and speed down and stuff and can shorten those effects on your allies. So this is a very good skill, but there are units like for example Primrose E. She has one skill which says elevating elixir, raise the physical attack and blah 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 and cure some status ailments. So this is not what I was talking about. Status ailments are the bleeding paralysis and stuff, but restore the physical attack, physical defense and stuff at max boost. So what is restoring mean? Restore means getting rid of the enfeebling which has been granted on one of those of your characters. So if you have those enfeeblings, you can relieve them with that skill, for instance but not something which is covering the elemental or the weapon resistance down, which can also occur and is also an enfeebling effect. So what is that supposed to mean? If you have a Soleil, for example, she has a skill which is called Dark Restoration here at the top, and that is raising dark resistance by 20% on your whole front row. If you have one enemy which is causing an 
and enfeebling with dark resistance down on your units, you can go for Soleil's dark resistance up for 20% to, uh, uh, to counter that, for instance. But you don't have any unit apart from Brigitte countering all enfeebling effects. You also have one information which is very, very interesting. You have the damage raising type total limit 30% example whatever. Uh, I will just break it down for you. So all augmentation effects on your group and all your enfeebling effects on the enemy, which you are doing, are kept at 30% on passive active and ultimate level. So the maximum of enfeebling effects on the enemy is 90 and the um, and the maximum of augmentation effects on your unit is also 90. So that's very good to know here. All status effects and many more explanations are always updated here with new skills and so on on the options help tab. So go here if you need further assistance. So attacking and damaging. We're coming for a unit which I really, really like and I used from the start, which is called Wingate. Maybe you have heard of him or already use him right now. He is one unit which has very incredible passive but if you don't know what they do, you can't really profit from that. I'm going for the second first. Raise damage of self by 20% when exploiting enemy weakness. What is exploiting? Exploiting is not when you have triggered that weapon or elemental type for the first time on your opponent. So it is like you have it has never been there and now it is there as a weakness and you have uncovered it. No, that's not exploiting. Well, it is kind of, but as soon as you're going for the same attack, it's still exploiting. So you can do that more often here. <laughs> and always it is 20% raising the damage from Wingate alone. But he has also a skill which is raising the damage dealt by a paired ally to broken foes by 20%. So if they're in the break state, they get a raised damage by 20%. So which units are profiting from that? Maybe we're going for a scholar because all have those same effect here. We have ice augment level 5, which is raising the ice damage of self by 30%. And if you have heard me right, then you have the damage of self is now at 30% at a passive level. So you have now the problem that we have the ice damage by 30% increased. So what is Wingate exactly doing right now? Nothing. He's not extending everything because that is his passive, which would make the damage go up to 50%, but this is not working because I just read it's 30%. So this is the maximum. Sophia's damage can't be boosted anymore. But if I go to Barad, he has one skill which is making his physical attack up by 15%. So if I use Wingate, we're now at 35%, aren't we? No, we are not. We have physical attack up, we have also elemental attack up and we have damage up. Is always standing there when it is originally meaning the damage type of the weapon or the element. It is not referring to the physical attack which is standing here on the left side or the elemental attack which is also standing there below it. So boosting the damage would increase the pole arm damage or the elemental one, the fire damage would be boosted by 20% from Wingate. But we have still, for the first three rounds, have the physical attack up by 15%. And we are at this point right now, when near death, raise Paul arm damage of entire front row by 15%. So we have one thing which we just cleared right now, Paul arm damage is increased, so we have then the 35% for, for sure this time, but only when near death. So, so what does this mean? If at 1 HP or what? Yeah, exactly. 1 HP or at least if Barad is at red bar. So there are three colors of the bar, green, 
yellow and red. And yellow is like 60% and red is like 10%, 15, something like this. So if at this state, then he is near death and is raising the front rows pole arm damage by 15%. But we will miss 5% here. This will cover up Wingate's boost, but this is all min-maxing at the end, so we don't take this into account. We have a unit right now on global server and he's called Leon and he has a very interesting skill where he is granting himself a dead aim for three turns. But what is dead aim it is not explained anywhere. But if you're just using that skill or with some other units, you can do the same. For example, Yan Long, which has an ultimate, which does the same. The dead aim is telling me that he always crits. That's about it. And there are units which can profit from those attacks. So if you are someday able to grant crit to a unit and there is a unit which can already do that, she's called Xenia, then units like, for example, large can profit from that because you have learned what damage up is. And if we say, and if we can see here, raise sword damage of self by 15% and critical damage by 15%. That means that he is not doing 30% of damage up unless he's critting with a sword attack. So if he is always critting with that skill I just said, then he's always going for the 30% cap of damage up which is amazing. There is a unit which is called Cerna, who has the spare res drain on attack. When unleashing some attacks, have a low chance to lower enemies' power arm resist or whatever she's doing. But what does this mean, some attacks? So she's doing some normal attacks like uh, attacking or if she's going for a repeated thrust or for a chain shadow impact. Uh, yeah. Exactly. She can go for anything from that list. It doesn't really matter because these are all counts as some attacks. So you can just go for them and you have the pole arm resistance down by 10% by chance. We have the Mighty Warriors Emblem 3, for example, which has this ability here. 20% chance of a follow-up strike when using attack. So using attack and some attacks are two different things. And this is not meaning that when I use a skill of hers, then we have a 20% chance of a follow-up strike. So it does attack again. This is not happening, sadly. It is only occurring then when we have a normal attack. But there's also something I want to show you right now, fighting an enemy. And that is the passive, active and ultimate levels of the debuffs. So I'm just fighting Commander Titus here, you, who you may know right now. We are just doing the, the, the fortifying spice right now. This time we have the physical defense down and the spare resistance down, decreased by 3 turns and you can see without a frame this is an active level here so that got reduced right now by one turn if i'm doing another skill so like rush for instance then this will be not even extended it will be capped because one was doing 20 percent and the other skill did 10 percent to both of those skills we now have 30 percent on physical defense reduce and spare resistance reduce but i want to trigger a passive now too when the lance hurl is coming here, you have seen it, the pole arm resistance down got also activated. So we have three turns of passive pole arm resistance down too. In addition to the pole arm resistance down of 30% we have right now. And we have an ultimate level of increasing that even further here with three rounds of ultimate 
pole arm resistance down. The battle is over now because Roland is just way too strong. So as I said here, when unleashing some attacks, we have a high chance to get 15% pole arm resistance down. So we have 15% on the 30% I have triggered. So 45%. And with four dragons, his ultimate, we can also go for 20% more on the ultimate level. So they stack on each other, but on different levels. So we have 65% with only one unit here on pole arm resistance down. So this is really amazing. I was highlighting Cerna for the last minutes. She has also that skill, which is reducing the pole arm resistance down by 10%. So if you are going for Cerna's some attack, so it can be everything here, then we can also extend the passive from Roland by additional 10%. So we have 25%. So in the end, we're at 70 five percent of pole arm resistance okay so this is where the min maxing is beginning and you can increase your damage output further and further and it is crucial at the later part of the game and maybe even at mid game to defeat some bosses or to do enormous damage in between a few rounds when buffed appropriately and of course got the right enfeebling effects and status ailments maybe also on the enemy to increase your damage output way way further than you could have done without them so we're at the last tab here battle actions and this will be covered with this group here and i go into a battle with yan long which is an arena champion all those units have something in common alberic has one skill which has during turn with his defend she has something which says act faster during turn and also delay actions during turn alfin has the same here with delay actions during turn and we have also during turn here with fior ex so what does all these things mean so we just try it out i would say if i put the defend here on Alberic and just activate it. You see here on that actions here on the left side, what is happening. Alberic is going before even Yan Long at the first turn. So he will defend before he is going to attack. There's also something else here. If I go for the swift trifle thrust, then that will happen too. So both of those attacks are doing the same. Act faster during turn and during turn does mean we are able to act before the enemy. So this is amazing. But what is this skill doing here? So Pomegranate Panica is making Alfin act lastly. This is also happening with Tressa here. And because Tressa is slower than Alfin, this means that she is acting even after Alfin. So it is always depending on the speed here too, but not on the speed of the opponent. It's only regarding the speed of your allies here. And if I do the physical counter or elemental cover melody, we are also coming first here with Fior because um, because Alberic is the slowest from both of them. But Ressa is the fastest right now. So this is important to know. So if you have during turn, then this will make those units act even before act faster during turn. And delay actions during turn is of course making them act at least. So there's even one more thing I want to talk about here. And I have to at first break Yan Long before doing that. I just don't do anything at all right now. Normally, if the enemy is coming out of the break, he will act before my units. So if I use the Swift Trifold Spear, you can see that Tressa doesn't go before Yan Long. But if I use the Defend, from Alberic, that makes him even faster, even if Yan Long should go first, but he came out of the break. This is also happening here with Fiori X. So as long as you have during turn, doesn't really matter if he's coming out of the break or not. So that's just uh, very interesting for you to know. 
So I really hope that this tutorial helped you and if I had watched this video earlier from my future self, I would have said pray at least someone who can give me advice on those stuff because it is not standing anywhere and this makes my gaming experience with Champions of the Continent even better. But if you have any other questions about this topic, please write them down in the comments or in my Discord group. And if you'd like this channel to class up, I really appreciate a subscription if you didn't already and give thumbs up to this video if you liked what you've seen. See you next time, you're free to play up.